This little bottle played a huge role in shaping Seattle's artistic life. Today in the Mossback's Den, we're gonna talk about how 19th century cure for constipation left a permanent mark on Seattle's culture. <laughs> This vial contains Beecham's Little Pills. They were invented in the early 19th century when constipation was a huge problem. And they purported to cure all kinds of things, including women's problems, headaches, and scurvy. They were incredibly popular. And they made the founding family, the Beecham's, wealthy. And the heir to that fortune was a man who self-taught himself in classical music and took the money in his deep pockets to pay his own musicians and he became one of the 20th century's most prominent conductors. He was the legendary Sir Thomas Beecham. He was the founder of the Royal Philharmonic, co-founder of the London Philharmonic, and he guest conducted all over the world. Beecham was an aristocrat. He could do whatever he wanted. In the early days of World War II, he was enticed to come to the small, remote port city of Seattle to take over the city's orchestra. Beecham seemed to embrace the challenge of taking a small provincial orchestra and turning it into something world-class. Beecham brought another thing to Seattle in addition to musical talent. He brought attitude. For Sir Thomas, attitude meant complete honesty. He one time described a soprano's voice as like a cart rolling downhill with the brakes on. And when he got to Seattle, he showed plenty of honesty. During one of his early performances in the city, a photographer took a picture of Beecham while conducting, and the click of the camera drove the maestro crazy. He stopped in mid-performance, scolded the photographer, and ordered him out of the hall, saying that what he had done was an insult to himself, the orchestra, and the performance. Sir Thomas could dish out criticism. He wasn't really good about taking it, but partly because he argued that the critics weren't smart enough to understand what they were listening to. One time, he took recordings he made with the Seattle Symphony and recordings of other famous symphony orchestras, and he played them for the critics behind a curtain. They picked his recordings as the best, which he said was proof they didn't know what they were talking about. One columnist wrote that Beecham entertained with baton and tongue. But Beecham is most remembered for what he thought was a positive comment that turned into something else. He was speaking to a group of boosters of the Seattle Symphony, and he was encouraging them to support the symphony and support the arts in Seattle. Sir Thomas said if he were a member of this community, he would be tired of being considered an aesthetic dustbin. Beecham meant it as an encouraging comment. He meant it as something that sympathized with the cultural ambitions of the city. It was taken very differently. Headlines spread across the region that Beecham had called Seattle an aesthetic dustbin, a dustbin being the English term for garbage can. The quote morphed and became even worse. Aesthetic changed to cultural, and cultural dustbin has been something Seattle has been trying to live down ever since. Sir Thomas did leave a positive legacy. The orchestra did improve, and they made recordings under his baton. He initiated the first Mozart Festival in Seattle. He initiated concerts for working people. He put on Pops concerts, and he toured the orchestra around the region. But he grew tired of being in Seattle, and he grew ill. Early in the 1943 season, he left. The city had lost its biggest catch. The man who had boosted Seattle's artistic image and also, by accident, destroyed it. Beecham didn't return to Seattle until 1960 when he came back for a series he was supposed to guest conduct at the Orpheum Theater. The first concert was a Pops concert and it went over very, very well. But Beecham caught a bug and fell ill and had to cancel the rest of the series. His widow said he came down with the illness that eventually did him in during that brief Seattle visit. Beecham still makes cold and flu remedies sold in Britain, but they apparently didn't help Sir Thomas. Our aesthetic dustbin apparently got its revenge.